Hi, it's Diederik Elman here. Over the last few weeks, ever since Christmas actually, we've seen a lot of dogs coming in with various uh, intoxications. In other words, they've eaten the wrong food. And so I thought I should do a video and go through the things that you should not feed your dog. Now, I've made some notes here that I may refer to occasionally. I want to make sure I get them all out for you. The biggest and the first thing we need to talk about at this time of the year are the hands, uh, the fatty offcuts off your meal, the um, processed, cured, preserved, salted foods. You shouldn't ever feed your dogs things like that. They can cause really bad tummy upsets and they can also cause pancreatitis. Now think of it this way, a million years ago out there, everything was lean and, and there was no fat on anything. Anything your dog predecessor caught and ate, killed and ate, was lean and thin. And their gut is adapted to eating that sort of food. So when you throw in things like really fatty meat, fats off your off, uh, fatty off cuts off your steak, um, ham, pork, um, anything preserved, pickled, um, corn silver side, um, bacon, uh, anything like that at all, it really plays havoc with your dog's tummy. Now, you may not to get away with it half a dozen times, but eventually you're going to have a problem. Even tiny amounts of ham and tiny amounts of fat, we've seen dogs come with major upsets. And let's be real about this, they can cause tummy upsets, but if your dog gets a nasty case of pancreatitis, your dog can die. So that's how severe this is. So if your dog wouldn't eat it out there a million years ago, don't feed it to your dog now. So that's uh, number one. Next thing we have onions and garlic. And a lot of people will give their dog garlic as, you know, for flea control and parasites and worming. There's no scientific evidence for that. So if you want to do it, I'm not going to talk you out of it, but look at the research online and, and, and make your own mind up as to whether it works or not. One thing is for certain though, that both onions and garlic can kill your dog. In your dog's bloodstream, uh, we have red blood cells, and those red blood cells in them have something called hemoglobin, and oxygen molecules attached to the hemoglobin, and that hemoglobin uh, molecule is a little bit like a taxi running around your dog's circulatory, circulatory system, carrying the oxygen. Well, both onion and garlic turns hemoglobin into met hemoglobin, and met hemoglobin cannot carry oxygen. So that's a, a, a couple of big things you shouldn't give. Now we all know about chocolate, definite no-no, and the better the quality of the chocolate, the worse the toxicity. So then we have macadamia nuts. This is a really interesting one. We still don't know the, the cause uh, of, of why macadamia nuts actually kill some dogs and not others. And some dogs can eat macadamia nuts their whole lives long and it would be not a, a problem. Others eat one macadamia nut and, and they drop dead. So this is a real uh, iffy one. It's also a really nasty one. And again, I've people say, oh, my dogs eat macadamia nuts. I'm suggesting you don't do it because one day it may cause a problem. The other thing with macadamia nuts is they're so hard they wear your dog's teeth away. So that's that. The, then we have um, grapes. Grapes raisins, any form of grapes, blows your dog's kidneys. And uh, again, fatal uh, kidney disease. So that's really nasty as well. Then we have gum, candy, peanut butter, mushrooms, avocado is a really nasty one. So avocado is totally fatal to your dog. Also to your cat, also to your chooks and your geese and, and animals like that. So stay away from those. Rhubarb is also very, very toxic, so be dangerous. that's very dangerous. Then we have almonds, dogs should not eat almonds. Cinnamon, apple seeds contain cyanide, so very, very poisonous as well. Um, apricot pits, pits, um, apricot pits are toxic in their own right, but any pit the size of an apricot is uh, the perfect size to go down the esophagus, into the stomach, and then get caught 
part of the way through the small intestine. So really nasty apricot pits for, for, for two reasons. Uh, cherry pits uh, can get caught as well. And then coffee grounds are really, really nasty as well. Very, very toxic coffee grounds. So the other thing is, is cooked bones. Think of it again, a million years ago, um, a, a dog would eat a bone and if the bone get caught, caught, the dog would die. So your dog's gastrics, stomach juices, are perfectly designed to destroy, uh, break down raw bones. So if you go back to high school chemistry, remember the bone is made up primarily of calcium and phosphorus. And go back, you had these calcium phosphorus bonds, remember all this chemistry stuff we used to do? Well, dogs, gut juices, digestive juices can dissolve the calcium phosphorus bond. When you cook a bone, you change the structure of the calcium phosphorus bond so that it becomes insoluble. In other words, your dog's gastric juices cannot break down the calcium phosphorus bond in a cooked bone. And therefore, cooked bones will not dissolve in your dog's guts. Now, saying that, I know there's people watching this that are gonna say, but I've always given my dog cooked bones and I've never had a problem. Well, my answer to that is you've been lucky so far, one day it will cause a problem. We see a lot of dogs come in for constipation, um, maybe one a fortnight. And the primary reason that, that what the cause, the primary cause of those constipated dogs is or are cooked bones. So stay off cooked bones. Well, I'm talking about bones as well. Uh, up to now, up to maybe the last six months, I've certainly been uh, a vet who's recommended uh, chicken necks, chicken wings, and chicken drumsticks as a really good source of chewing exercise for small dogs and for even medium dogs. And I need to change that now because we're seeing a lot of um, food poisoning uh, in dogs from chicken. And if you read, if you go on the net, you'll find there's a particular kind of bacteria that can live in raw chicken, uh, even once it's defrosted, and cause all sorts of issues. So from now on, please be like me and, and recommend no chicken of any type to your dog unless it's totally cooked and, and properly cooked. And I don't believe in giving cooked meat. And again, if you're giving cooked chicken, you're gonna be giving cooked chicken bones. So really you shouldn't be giving uh, chicken at all anymore. So I've got two more things uh, I wanna talk about. The, the next thing is potatoes. Cooked potatoes are good, high carbs though, so not, you're not gonna, the dog's not gonna lose weight on cooked potato. Uh, a lot of people will give their dogs pasta and rice and potato. And, and when they're trying to have the dog lose weight, well, uh, they're high carbs and just like in us, they're bad. But uh, from a safety perspective, cooked potato is okay, even though it's high in carb. Um, raw potato is quite toxic to dogs, so be really careful of that. And when I've been talking about all these things in dogs, please, in brackets next to the word dog, put and cats in there. Uh, cats have exactly the same predisposition uh, to these uh, food types as dogs do. And there's one other thing I want to add in with cats, and that is lilies. Lilies as in the plant. Every single solitary lily species is toxic to cats. And they only just have to lick the leaves of some of them. And it's fatal and there is no treatment. So peace lily, all, the, all those lilies, every single solitary one, if you've got one in the house, get it out of the house uh, if you've got a cat. Because all your cat has to do is lick the leaves and you've got a potentially dead cat. So please get rid of all the lilies. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope there's been some interesting stuff there for you. If you've got any questions or queries, please give me a yell at the, at the practice and I'm, I'm happy to talk you through this in more detail. See you on the next video.